Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics series on college algebra. So in this video, I'm going to be discuss discussing domain versus codomain versus range and what each of the three mean. So this video is going to tie together ideas from our functions video and from our sets videos, which you will find in the college algebra playlist. So let's start by defining what each of these are. So in mathematics, the domain is, uh, it is the set of all possible inputs into a function. All possible function inputs. Values. All right, in our codomain, is the set of all possible all possible function output values and the range the range is the set of all actual output values So when you're learning about algebra for the first time, codomain and range are often confused. But uh, I'm hoping this video will clear it up a little bit. Um, they have similar definitions. So they involve the output of a function. But the key difference is that the codomain is the set of every output that is possible. And the range is uh, all of the actual outcomes when you input an x value. So, Let's start with an example. So we've got a function here. So f of x is equal to 2x. So let's start thinking about what our domain could be. So our domain is the set of all real numbers. We could really put anything into this x value and get out a real answer. So our domain is from negative infinity to infinity. And our codomain, well, really, we can get out any possible number. All of, the, all of the f of x values are valid. So anything from negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers again. But let's find out what our range is and whether that differs from our codomain. So let's do a chart. I'll rewrite our function over here. So let's do a chart of our input and output. So f of x, excuse me. So we've got our inputs first and our output. So let's start with zero. Let's just start arbitrarily with zero. So x, so when x is zero, we've got uh, f of x is equal to 2x. So when our x is zero, we've got um, f of x is equal to 2 times zero, and our output is zero. All right, let's continue on. So what happens when x is equal to one? So then our input is two times one, and our output is two. And if we continue on, we'll find that even though we can use every x value that we've got in our domain, our, uh, our output is always going to be even numbers. So we're only using half of our codomain. So our range, we've found, is every even number. So we've got the set of even numbers over here, both negative and positive. Actually, that is not the notation we'll use for that because 
the domain I've defined, defined as negative infinity to positive infinity. So that includes uh, decimal numbers and uh, fractions. This is all real numbers. And so our range We can, for now, just write it as all even numbers. So let's do another example here. This time, we're going to define our domain as all of the uh, all of the whole numbers. So we'll start at zero and go to one, two, three. So our domain is the set of whole numbers. And our codomain will use the same definition. Our codomain is also the set of all whole numbers. And let's find out what our range will be if our function is f of x equals x squared plus 3. So we've got a different function. So let's start a new chart. So we've got our input values and our output values. So let's input our first, our first whole number, 0. And so if we've placed 0 in for all of the x values. So f of 0 is equal to 0 squared plus 3. Then our output is positive 3. And we can continue on. Our uh, output for when our x value is 1 will be 1 squared plus 3, which is 4. And for 2, we've got 2 squared plus 3. So we'll have 4 plus 3 equals 7. And so we'll have a list of numbers that isn't quite related to the codomain in the same way that our last example was. So we'll have a range of specific numbers that will go on to infinity. But it starts with 3 4, and 7. And so if we're looking at our range and codomain, our range, this is true for every function, our range is a subset of the codomain. If we remember the definition of a subset, it is that all of the items in the subset uh, exist in another set. So. So our range is a proper subset of our codomain. And I hope that clears up the difference between the codomain and range. It's a little bit of a confusing topic, but it is easy enough once you've got a little practice. Thank you for watching this worldwide Center of Mathematics short on algebra. So be sure to click this button to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any new math videos. Click here to visit the playlist for the video that you just watched, and click on this button to visit centerofmath.org for even more math resources.